This mini PC is sporting a Core i7 with 14 cores and 20 threads. It also has two two and a half gig ethernet ports, finally. And not only that, when we opened it up, it was completely different than we thought it was gonna be. You asked for it, this is super interesting, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is a Minis Forum NPB7. Now this is one that we have gotten tons of requests for, so we ended up buying the Intel unit, we've had the AMD version, we just kinda wanted to compare them side by side, and we thought like they would be super similar, but we were totally wrong. Instead, they're completely different. Now, of course, they are the same generation of Intel versus AMD processors, so there are a lot of similarities in terms of the overall feature set, but how they're built is uh, is completely different, and we were not expecting that. And I just wanna say thank you to all the STH YouTube members who have joined it down below and are helping us buy these units so we actually have some money to go and budget to go buy these things. Your support makes these things possible, so if you can join, that'd be super appreciated. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so let's talk about the hardware in the system, and let's start with the front of this and show you one of the reasons that this is completely different than the AMD version. So on the front of this, we get two USB Type-A ports and one Type-C port. Compare that to the UM790 Pro and you get two USB 4 ports on the front. On the front of this, you also get an audio jack and there is even a little microphone, but this microphone is not great because all you're basically picking up is fan noise. Now looking around the system, a couple things here. So first off, uh, you look at the side of the system and you can see that this is a nice little like, I guess perforated side or whatever. And then you go look at the other side and it's, uh, it's a perforated side, but then they have another just kind of just giant cutout so you can see the CPU heatsink. We're gonna get to that in a second. But overall, this definitely feels a little bit cheaper of a chassis. I mean, there's a lot of plastic going on here, guys. And uh, you know, there's some venting on the bottom, but definitely a lot of plastic. And the other kind of weird thing, and this is something that I, I think that, you know, is just one of those ones that you would never notice if you didn't have both the UM790 Pro and the NPB7 right next to each other is just the fact that Mini's form, although these look like they're the same size, they're, they're not. I have these two units where the back corner is aligned and I can clearly see, and I can run my finger straight down the side of the UM790 because the NPB7 is just not as wide, but it is a little, there's a tiny little overhang here in front. So it is a small difference, and I just don't know why Minis Forum didn't just say like, hey, this is the size of our chassis for this generation. And the other big one is the thickness of these chassis. So the UM790 Pro is actually a much smaller chassis. And part of that is actually that the rubber feet on the UM790 Pro are taller, but even with the fact that you have taller rubber feet on the UM790 Pro, the NPB7 is still taller because it's a taller physical chassis. So it's just kind of crazy to me that they just didn't standardize on one side. It was a couple of millimeters either way. Now we're going to look at the back in a second, but I just want to show you the bottom of these. There is a little bit of a different design here. And I just want to point that out that they are different even on the bottom. And when we get to the back of the systems, yeah, let's, let's get to it. There's a lot of differences here. So whereas our USB 4 ports are on the front of the UM790 Pro, they're on the back of the NPB7 but at least we get two Type-C USB 4 ports, which I think is great. So all told, you get one more USB Type-C port. It's a 10 gigabit per second port, but you get one more with the NPB7 over the UM790 Pro. But the back of the system feels to me a little bit like Noah's Ark, like there's two of everything. You also get two USB Type-A ports, and then you get two HDMI ports, and finally you get two two and a half gig ethernet ports. Now these ethernet ports are Intel i225V, so they're not the i226, which means that you do get a little bit better compatibility, but at the same time, the i226 was a lower power version, it's newer, and also has a couple bug fixes in it. So I think that the i226 generally would be what I would prefer these days. However, there are more things that are compatible with the i225, so if you care about compatibility, that's definitely it. But that brings us to our next point that you get on the NPB7 that you don't get on the UM790 Pro. That is, you get two two and a half gig ethernet ports. I don't know why on the AMD version you can't get a second two and a half gig ethernet port. I really like the fact that this has dual LAN now, a lot of folks are gonna say, well, hey, I only need one two and a half gig ethernet port. I don't need two of them. And let me just kind of give you a thought on that, right? These come pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. Windows 11 Pro has a feature called SMB3 multi-channel, which allows you to take two ports just like this, and you can plug them into one of these very inexpensive $70 switches or $65 switches, whatever. We have a whole you know video and review that might be live before this, I don't know. But you can at least check our buyer's guide on this and find lots of these two and a half gig ethernet switches that are very inexpensive. What you can do is you can just take two cables, plug them into a unmanaged switch like this. You don't have to do any more setup as long as the NAS and the, the client are set up for it. And you just get a pretty darn good performance. Like you don't necessarily get like twice two and a half gig ethernet, but you're probably getting 500 megabytes per second. That's pretty darn awesome, guys. The other thing we're gonna talk about later in our power consumption noise section is just the fact that there is another vent here, and that's because this thing actually uses quite a bit of power. But with that, let's get inside the system. 
Okay, so let's talk about getting inside the system and there are two different things that you can get at. So the first thing is that you can remove these rubber feet, which is a total pain. And if you remove the rubber feet, you can go and you can get in here with some screws and you can see what's inside. You're gonna see inside that you get your CPU, heatsink, and fan. The processor here is an Intel Core i7-13700H. And that means that we get a total of six performance cores, which means that those have six cores, 12 threads. And then we get an additional eight efficient cores, which are just single threaded. That means in this little system, we get a total of 14 cores and 20 threads. Okay, so opening up the system is very different than the UM790 Pro. The UM790 Pro, you did the same thing where you peeled off the little rubber feet, and that's how you get to things like the memory, the SSD, and the Wi-Fi module. So that kind of tells us our big difference, right? Whereas we have the CPU on the bottom of this on the UM790, the Ryzen version, we have the CPU on the top. And that means that there's a easier way to get inside this. So, so the system has a little label that says push here and you can get inside. And when we did that, it's really awesome. You just push down like this, you pop up, and then you can just take the top cover off. And once you do that, you're inside it. You can go service the system super easily. And what you can see here is that inside the system, we got a total of 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory and two Kingston SO DIMMs. We also got a one terabyte Kingston NVMe SSD. Something kind of fun that you can see here, we have a photo of it, is that the SSD has a little heat sink with a little fan on it, so there is another fan in the system. It's a little bit of a bummer to me that there's a heat sink and fan just on the NVMe SSD. It's not particularly a fast NVMe SSD, so it's kind of weird that you would have that here, but you don't have like an overall cooler that also would hit things like the memory. So the other thing here is that we get a single M.2 slot, so adding more storage is not as easy as just adding a second M.2 SSD, which is kind of a bummer. I always wish these things had two NVMe slots these days. The other kind of weird thing though, is just let's talk about the Wi-Fi solution here. Now on the plus side, we get Wi-Fi 6E, but the weird thing is that this is using the MediaTek, I think it's like an RZ608 or something like that, uh, Nick, instead of like an Intel AX211 or something like that. Like I just don't understand why Minis Forum wouldn't just, if they're using Intel mixed in for the LAN in the back, even though they're IG25s, like why wouldn't they just use the Intel Wi-Fi solution, why would they use the solution that you typically see with AMD Ryzen? Like, just kind of weird to me. So I do want to fan an Intel Wi-Fi solution and also a second NVMe like slot or something like that in here. But at the same time, frankly, I really like this little design. I think this little design and you know being able to not use a screwdriver to go and access your system is probably one of the best we've seen. In fact, I would go as far to say that this is better than getting inside an Intel Nook because this is a super easy action. But the bigger question is, how does it perform? So let's get to that next. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of this and we're gonna kind of go through some of our charts and something you're gonna see just in our standard charts is that the performance of this is actually very good. It's very competitive with the high-end AMD Ryzen 7940HS. And we saw the same thing when we went to Geekbench 5 and 6. It was very competitive with those as well. So from a Core i7 standpoint, I think this is a big win for Intel. Now we're gonna talk about the power consumption and how they got there in a second, but at the same time, you do get more CPU performance out of this than you do a lot of other systems on the market today. Now on the GPU side, we get the integrated Intel XE graphics, which is a good solution. It's not necessarily anywhere near as fast as the modern AMD RDNA 3 graphics. So I would say that if you wanted to play games or something like that, I would probably get an AMD based system. On the other hand, if like the type of games you play are solitaire, pinball maybe, or maybe like Dave the Diver or something like that, then I would say that something like the Minis Forum NPB7 with the Intel XE graphics, I think is, is perfectly okay for that. But a big part of the performance story is also the power and noise story. So let's get to that section next. Let's start with the power consumption first. Now we get our normal, you know, 120 watt power adapter, which is pretty generous, but the system also needs it. Let's just talk about the idle power consumption. You're gonna see here that we're in that like maybe eight and a half to about 11 and a half watt range, which is not too bad. It's jumping around a bit because well, it's Windows 11 and what can you do? And while we're talking about idle, the noise on this in a 34 dBA noise floor studio is somewhere in the high 34s to low 35s. Just sitting here, I can hear it, but I wouldn't say it's annoying by any means when it's at idle. But the big question is clearly the load numbers. So let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, you can see here that we're doing about 130 watts, which is uh, absolutely crazy. This thing is using a ton of power, much more than we see from the AMD Ryzen-based systems. And after about 30 seconds, you're gonna see that the power consumption went from about 130 watts down to maybe 62, 63 watts, somewhere in that range. That is a huge drop off. And so let me do this again unless you hear the unit. So here's the system under load. 
Okay, so that's definitely a pretty massive jump in terms of noise. And even when I have it down on the table, the microphone's up here and you can still hear it because it's it's definitely noticeable at this point. And that's the big difference between the Intel Minis Forum and the AMD Minis Forum that we just tested. Like that 120 watts is, uh, is definitely getting pushed when you're talking about 130 watt total at the wall, right? Because it's at the wall. Uh, power consumption versus like this thing is maybe under 100 watts, well under 100 watts. So it's a pretty big difference between the two. But like everything, we always like to have key lessons learned. So let's get to that next. Okay, so for all these, I like to have key lessons learned. And what did I learn on this? So first off, I think that the CPU in here, this Core i7 is actually really fast. And I really like the performance that you get from the processor. On the other hand, I think that the power consumption and even the noise that come out of this thing are probably a little bit higher than I would want from a mini PC. I would just want something that's bigger, that's quieter. Like, like why do we need to make something this small if we're trying to do 120 watts or 130 watts or something like that? I just kind of feel like let's let's make this thing a little bit bigger like B-Link did. And at the same time, maybe, maybe that gets us a little bit better cooling. I, would like to see a larger fan instead of just an NVMe SSD fan, just because I think that's a cleaner solution and it helps in more scenarios. I would love to see that second N.2 slot because I think that's a just required feature. And also like, what the heck, why do they have two Intel wired NICs and Intel CPU, and then they have a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E module. Why not just have an Intel module? That's just crazy to me, but at least you get Wi-Fi 6E, which is good. But I've also criticized Minis Forum for being hard to service. I've always had to like pull off these little feet. You do the screws, it's just a pain in the butt to go do that. And I think that this really fits is it. I wish that Minis Forum does more of this because I think that's an awesome little feature. But again, if you're playing games, I would get the AMD RDNA 3 version rather than the Intel XE graphics version because it's just a way better integrated graphics GPU and solution. It just, it's just way better. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with some of your friends, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.